This is Keys to the Shop, episode number 14. And today we're talking about a barista's guide to advancing. Hey everybody and welcome to this edition of Keys to the Shop. My name is Chris DeFirio. I'm your host and this podcast is dedicated to giving you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. And today we are talking about a guide to advancing or how to take full advantage of where you are uh, right now and set yourself up for success. So this guide is meant to help you be a catalyst to your advancement rather than just waiting for it to happen. Within all organizations, your opportunities for advancement uh, often are dependent on whether people recognize the work you're doing or are paying attention to what you're doing. And, you know, the worst thing that we can do is hope that we're going to be chosen or hope that opportunity comes our way without taking action, organized action. And uh, that's what today's episode is going to be about. Like, what can you do to make a difference right now so that you will be more prepared for an opportunity and be one of the first choices for it? Many of us who have advanced in coffee did so because we took opportunity where we could find it and we made steps in the direction of our dreams. You know, we nobody asked us to work on home machines. Nobody asked us to go, you know, drive to a latte art throwdown or watch all of those videos or read all those books. We just pursued it. And in that spirit, I want you to listen to this episode today because your career is up to you. Like right now, you can make or break where you are in the industry 10 years from now. You have all the tools you need right now to become better and prepare yourself for opportunities that may come up in the future. So this is the understanding that we have right now, that we are the ones who need to make this happen. Let's start with a couple of questions. Why are you here in coffee, really? And where are you in coffee? Uh, first of all, let's let's talk about why are you here in coffee? This is really important. You know, Simon Sinek talks about start with why as a main motivator that keeps people trucking through hard times. Um, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. That's true. Now, if you consider your career a product, uh, you're more likely to stick with a career if you know why you're doing it rather than if you're just sort of rolling along wondering if you're going to find meaning in coffee work. General fascination only gets you so far. So we need to have some goals for our career and we need to be able to see ourselves advancing toward those goals in order to be fulfilled of where we are. And you can't advance if you don't have a vision for where you're going. And I'm reminded of a quote from, I believe it's from Alice in Wonderland. It's Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland. If you don't know where you're going, then any road will get you there. If you don't have a vision or goals for barista work, it can become easy to allow time to pass and frustration to set in because we don't see ma ourselves making any progress. We're going to need to have some goals. We're going to need to have some long-term goals and some short-term goals that are going to advance us toward our big why. Second thing is, where are you? And I mean, where are you in relation to the industry and maybe even to your career? And here's what I would say. I'd argue that most baristas' frustrations with fulfillment in their work stems back to an imbalanced or kind of skewed view of the work in the position that causes them to not take full advantage of lessons and rewards that happen while there. I'm definitely somebody who didn't take advantage of all of the lessons and rewards that barista work had to offer. In hindsight, maybe if I had applied myself more or been mentally more present in, in past jobs, I would have viewed it differently. Barista work is interesting because it's where we first start to get familiar with what the industry has to offer, what the community has to offer. So we wake up to these things while we're baristas. For a lot of us, that's true. And I also think it's true that familiarity breeds contempt. And generally, we start to think in this mindset of the grass is greener. Oh, I need to move on from this shop or I need to do a different job or a different role because this is not very fulfilling. And then when we do, we get more engaged. We get more purposeful after leaving the barista position because it's new. And we feel like we've made a more personal decision in, in that job or that transfer to another job 
be, so therefore that decision was a better one or this job is a better one. And I think that can be a pretty deceptive thing uh, if we aren't paying attention. It's helpful to have a little skepticism when it comes to how you view where you are right now and ask, is this really the truth of the situation or is it just the familiarity of my job that's talking? Uh, what I don't want us to do is shortchange ourselves of, of where we are right now. Because as a barista, especially if you're just starting out, you have the advantage of being able to set a foundation for the rest of your career in relative anonymity and safety. It's a lot safer to make mistakes as a barista, again, especially if you're just starting out, than it is to make mistakes when you're a manager. Because the mistakes you make later, A, they're harder to change because they've become habits. B, they have way more implications on uh, more people that are looking to you as an example. So when you're a barista, you can pivot quicker, make more mistakes, cut your teeth, learn lessons, um, and it's cool. You're not really entrenched into one particular career path at this point. Um, and the ability, again, to change it is harder as you get older and as you invest more into a particular role. So you have to approach the barista role from a mindset of wanting to get wisdom from others, learning all you can, asking a ton of questions, forming the right habits, be mindful in your disposition, especially in the beginning. Um, some of the things that I did that were really stupid when I was a barista and made you know fantastic mistakes, as you know in my early days, and, and you know I make mistakes now too, but like my first day at Gimme Coffee, I think I I poured ground coffee into the grinder. Uh, instead of whole bean, which was, you know, we had to have the tech take it all out and make sure the, the machine was fine. Um, what else did I do? Uh, I th I remember telling one of the customers at the cafe um, who used the phone all the time for his own personal use, quote, why don't you just get a cell phone? Of course, that wasn't really received very well, you can imagine. Uh, thankfully, the manager sided with me at that time, um, but it was not the smartest thing for me to say. And uh, another cool, not cool thing, but pun intended, maybe, uh, I used to hate answering the phone on the bar. Um, and at another cafe, I remember because I was so frustrated about having to answer the phone while on bar that I would just put the phone in the refrigerator because I had better things to do, but I would forget about it. And people would ask like, hey, uh, where's the phone? Oh, man, I, and I have to say I forgot. And I, I take it out of the fridge. And they're just looking at me like, what is this guy doing putting the phone in a fridge? So anyway, that was that was cool. <laughs> but not cool at the same time. So now if I had done those things last week on the bar, you can be sure that it would have had a bigger impact, especially People expect somebody with 17 years of experience in coffee to act a little bit, you know, with more sense. And uh, it would have negatively impacted the culture and maybe taught people that you can get away with that kind of activity. But as a barista, you know, I might impact some people, but I'm, I'm not as, you know, it's, it's not going to be as detrimental. You learn from those mistakes and those incorrect actions, and you move on. You get better. And that some of them are innocent mistakes, and others maybe not. But we're all human. We all make mistakes. Enjoy the time you're a barista, but do so mindfully, setting yourself up for success later. So take full advantage of where you are right now and the lessons that you can learn while you're there. Show up 100% every time you're on shift. You know, the bottom line is you have to find value in, in this small beginning stage of your career. So at this point, I want to go over three steps that you need to do, I think, always in your barista career to advance and to grow and to set yourself up for success in the industry. The first thing that we want to do, the first step is pretty obvious, and that's, are you doing what you were hired to do? And are you doing it well? Are you doing the first things? Uh, your main job at this moment is to make sure that you're absolutely killing the job that you are hired to do 
and then some. So having ambition beyond your role is fine. We all have dreams, but if you're not doing the first things, it makes no sense to be frustrated that you're passed over for a promotion or not given opportunity to pursue something not directly related to your work if you're not doing those first things. The company hired you to bring value to what they value. You know, and that's usually written out in the form of, a, you know, checklists and guides, things like that. So how are you going to be sure that you're doing these first things absolutely amazingly? First, do what you understand from what you were given uh, and what you were told. Usually people give you a manual. It outlines for you policies, procedures, recipes, things like that. And they verbally, they'll tell you things as well. That's your world. That should be your world. Understanding and making just a part of the fabric of how you work that thing. Uh, you know, I, just like anybody else, want to do more than what I'm told. It, it's, a, it's a pride thing. Um, or I declare victory on the manual. Like, I know the manual, but I've only read it once. I know tons of baristas and, you know, I'm guilty of this myself, just reading the manual once and saying, cool, that's pretty straightforward. I got it. But how many of us study that manual? How many of us are, are experts in the standard operating procedures of our cafes? Or do we think that's just the manager's job? It definitely is our job too as baristas. So we have to look at the first things being, okay, do you understand what you were first told? And are you actually doing it? So here's, so here's an example of how first things can prevent you from advancing. I talked to you about my uh, first job in coffee being one where I was, I was fired. And, um, you know, they, they said when I was fired, it just isn't working out, which is a nice way of saying you're, like, you're completely incompetent. And, and, you know, at least that's the way I interpret it. And I think it's true. But some of the pr practical things that I did to sort of submarine my first job in coffee, it's hard to say the word practical when, it, when it's in those terms, but was that I was fascinated with coffee. I loved it. I was passionate about it. I read all about it. I was um, into latte art. I was doing all of the things, right? But I wasn't doing the first things. I didn't really know the checklist that well. I was just happy to be behind an espresso machine doing my thing, you know? I was I was I was happy with where I was, but I wasn't really after the things that I was hired to do. So I would do dishes for instance slower than was necess than was necessary for the proper function of the bar and I wasn't getting any better because it wasn't a priority to me. And also I wouldn't pay attention to the closing list. And I would just go over things that had already been done because I wasn't paying attention. I was in my own little world. And so uh, uh, what is that over there? A clean pastry case? Oh, I'll just go clean it. When I could be doing something that mattered because somebody already did that. I, I wasn't contributing. I wasn't a team, a team player. But you can be sure that after I was fired, at the next job that I had in coffee, I was the best dishwasher. And I was the best closer. I wanted to learn from those mistakes. And I wanted to make the first things that I was hired to do a priority. It was a cold, hard lesson. But you've got to do those first things well in order to bring value. And then you can kind of open up opportunity for yourself to see your passions be facilitated. Okay? So the second part of this is that uh, of this first step of doing the first things is you have to ask your boss about your performance in relation to what has already been communicated. Ask them how you're doing with your closing shift, with your opening shift. Is the place clean enough? Am I getting tables bust quick enough? You know what the standards are because they're written out and they've been communicated. That, and if not, then ask them, what are the standards for these things so that I can, I can make these things happen in my, in my shift? Um, you can also ask your coworkers to help you assess your progress. Uh, we don't see ourselves as other people see us. And if you really want honest assessment of where you are, you're going to go to an outside source. And that can be your boss or it can be your coworkers or both. I recommend both. 
Now, one of the things that you're going to have to do in this process that you should carry with you for your entire career is have written goals and a uh, plan for your shift. Not very many people, I can tell you I did not, have a plan for their shift. When they come in on Monday, they just think, okay, today I've got to do you know, the opening checklist and then I'm going to you know, practice some of my latte art. I'm, I'm going to do the things that are expected of me to do. But they're not really trying to f- view that shift as a training ground for the future of their career. Every time you check in to the cafe is an opportunity for you to invest into your future career. It doesn't even really matter if it's a coffee career we're talking about. The more you develop character and an organized, forward-moving, goal-oriented mindset now, even in a ca- in cafe work, if you're studying to be like a landscape architect, it's going to serve your other career better if you do that now in coffee. So you're, you're training kind of like cross-training in coffee. But for now, let's assume that you're going to stay in coffee forever because, you know, all of us want to, right? If you know from talking to your boss that you need to bust tables faster, then write down for Monday a goal to be able to bust those tables faster within the time frame that has been told to you. That's just an example. You can have a number of examples on that card. On top of all the other work that's expected of you, what are your goals personally that you want to uh, accomplish that day? And those are your first things. So how are you doing on those first things? Have you owned them? Have you internalized them? Could you teach them? Are, are they a part of what you do? Okay. The second step for us is now that you've mastered the first things in the cafe, I think you should reassess your goals. The reason I say this is because it can change your view of the position when you invest into the position. So you owe it to your goals to view them through the lens of somebody who's made progress in the barista position. And to be honest, we should be reassessing our goals all the time uh, because we change and life changes us. And I'm a different person now, 17 years after starting in coffee than I was way back then. And, and my goals have changed. I started wanting to open a coffee shop and 17 years later, no coffee shop. But, you know, the shop I would have opened back then, had I made good on that goal, would be remarkably different than the one I'd open today. So I'm kind of glad that I adjusted my goals as I went along. So the second thing is, is not just that you reassess your goals, but now you've got to go to your boss and ask them what's next. You know, Lauren Arola, uh, in our episode where we talked about uh, she her moving to be a manager and then uh, going back to being a barista, she became a manager because she was uh, wanting to do more for the company. She was a barista and she said, hey guys, what can I do that's more than what I'm doing right now? And an opportunity came her way because she asked. Now, you need to communicate your desire to move on to your boss and say, here are the things that I'm doing right now. And they'll know because you've already involved them in the process of your goals. They already know that you carry this card with you or that you have a plan for your shift and that you enlist the help of those around you to create this this the momentum in your career. So when you go to them and you ask them about advancement, they're going to know who's standing in front of them is somebody who is serious about advancement, okay? They're going to tell you what the next steps are. Now, opportunity might not be there. If you want to become a trainer, maybe there's no training position open. There might be in the future. So they can tell you what it would take for you to become a trainer with no guarantees. But, you know, if you want to set yourself up to do training and you're sure that that's the direction that you want to go, you've, you know, you've reassessed your goals like we talked about this is where you want to go, then this is the thing that you need to do. You know, you need to learn how to teach people. You need to learn about milk science. You need to know about extraction theory. Um, Maybe they'll give you like two or three other things that are important for the role. And now that you know what it takes to become a trainer, you can sort of add those to the list of things that you're pursuing where you can find opportunity on the bar. 
So if you want to learn how to teach people, then you can be more helpful on the bar for new baristas. If a new barista is having trouble steaming milk, are you able to help them effectively? Now, if you're the one that people turn to for help on the bar for milk steaming, and people know that, and a training position opens up, you might be one of the first people that's thought of in terms of, like, who are we going to get to train? So when a training position opens up, the manager might say, well, you know, Sarah's always been really helpful for the new baristas, always assisting the manager in, in training them up to understand milk and, and whatnot. When the manager's not there, uh, they she might be the first choice on our list. We should, we should ask her if uh, she's still interested in this position. Now, if you just said, I want to be a trainer, and I told you what was required, but then you went away and did not make any progress on the things that I was talking about, and then you weren't chosen for the position, you know why. Or at least you should know why if you haven't been putting in the time to make those steps possible. Or if you haven't been putting in the effort to do those things that the job would require of you. Now, as a barista, you might not want to move away from the position of a barista because you are satisfied with where you are. Uh, Not in terms of just never moving forward, but maybe you don't want to become a roaster anymore because you now view barista work in a different light than you did before. It's more satisfying to you now and you want to stay here but you still want to get paid more. There's nothing wrong with going to your manager, and I would definitely advise that you do this. Ask them what it would take to get paid more. Ask them how you can advance and still be a barista. You would like to get paid more. Um, What can I do? Now, not every manager or owner is going to react in the ideal way to questions. That's just going to, it's part of the industry we're in, unfortunately, that not every manager or owner is you know, going to be on the ball. Your manager or the owner should be helping you be successful in your position. But the whole point of this episode is to tell you, you can't wait for them to show up as a manager or to do what the ideal manager or owner will do. You've got to bring it to them, if, especially if they're not you know, on the ball with, with things. Another aspect of why approaching your boss about advancement or enrichment or a raise is that your boss might be unaware, not maliciously, but in terms of your desire to become more than a barista or to advance your career, uh, you've got to help them help you. I think a lot of people are really good at hiding their desires. In order to help somebody, you know, I need to know that they want to be helped. And part of my job, yes, is to be curious, is to be a manager that investigates and finds uh, where people fit best in the coffee shop, where they fit best in the industry. I want to be the cheerleader for people's careers as much as I can. But in the end, I'm going to miss it. And some others in management, you know, are going to miss it a lot. So again, we can't wait for others to get it together We have to start doing what we can do right now, and that means helping them help you. So the bottom line here is this. Communicate your desire, get the details of what it takes to get there, and apply yourself in ways that you have available to you right now on bar to prepare for the position or to be the first choice uh, when that position becomes available. I'm going to say that you should be really patient with this. I was talking with Ryan Soder, who we talked with on episode number two about workflow, and uh, we were talking about how people are generally impatient when it comes to this. If you communicate your desire to do more or be more, uh, generally it, it can happen where a month or two passes and nothing happens, and you can think, man, well, I, I told them that I wanted to do more, but nothing is happening. I guess that means that nothing will happen. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that Things take a while to change. People take a while to change, first of all. And as a manager, we want to see people change long term. Something that Ryan told me I think is really key here, and that's it's not good enough to just make the change that's necessary to become a trainer uh, for a month or two. 
Like if you get really serious for a month or two and then fall off, that will show that you weren't really serious, okay? You have to do this long-term and you just have to continue. I mean, we're talking probably a year at minimum. If, if somebody comes to me and says, I wanna be a trainer or I wanna be a manager and I outline for them what it means and what position the position requires, if I don't see them living into that role in their current position, showing promise for at least a year, it's going to be really hard for me to know that they're going to be able to perform that role should I give it to them for a year. You're going to have to be patient with this process and make sure that this is the direction you want to head into and just make the change that's necessary and create sustainable habits that you can do long term. So the third thing that you can do to advance yourself and set yourself up for success in the industry in your coffee career is to seek out outside resources and supplemental learning. Now, of course, the caveat here is that you shouldn't be doing these things as a replacement for the educational materials and expectations that you have in your current role. But these things can be very, very helpful for um, developing you as a professional and uh, when you decide that you want to move beyond the role that you currently have, if you if you want to do that, learning from these things is really a must. Well, like we're talking in terms of accessing information through the SCAA, there are blogs, podcasts like this one, and there are lots of YouTube videos that you can uh, access for great information on barista work. So the bottom line is there are a lot of resources that you can access, but not just media. You can reach out to actual people. That's a great thing about this community. You can go to a conference and talk to actual people who are veteran baristas. They've been doing it for a long time, and you could learn a lot about your position and even positions that you hope to one day be in. Talk to owners of cafes if you want to open your own store. Talk to roasters if you want to become a roaster. There's really no limit to who you can talk to in the industry. Not everybody is going to be as responsive, but if you just put a little effort into this and a little coordination and mix that with some persistence, you'll be surprised at how much information you can glean and great networking too. You can form relationships with people that you never thought you would form a relationship with. Don't be afraid to approach people who are well-known and don't underestimate people who aren't well-known uh, and make sure that it's the merit that you're after. Like, are these people doing a great job? Are these voices ones that I should listen to? And then go for it. Get those resources. Now, at the end of all of these things, what are you going to benefit from this? Well, first of all, you benefit by being better at your job. That means that you're going to be closer to opportunity when opportunity comes, but it means also that you are more satisfied where you are. You're more fulfilled because you can see progress. It also means that you're going to be more prepared to take on more responsibility. A lot of people are promoted into positions too fast. No, nobody is holding back their ambition with common sense. Some people are made managers way before they're ready, and they just Frankly, they just stink up the place, you know, because they didn't really gain character development through the trials of barista work. So you, in your position now, have the ability to gain strong footing in character that will prepare you to be a better leader and a better, you know, whatever in the future, because now you've taken advantage of the lessons, the failures, the successes and you become more mature in the process. Now, in general, you're also more valuable to the industry. So if you end up having to leave where you are to pursue another job, you're going to leave with all of those skills under your belt in all that character development, and you're going to go out into the industry with those things. So none of this is a guarantee that you're going to advance in your position. In the end of the day, Maybe you you do all these things, but you are passed over for a promotion or something shady is going on. You can't control those things. And yeah, maybe it's time to move on. But again, you win because not only were you able to make the most of the situation, you get to keep the skills and the character you developed while you were there. 
So in all these things, remember to be patient. And if you apply these principles, if you apply these steps to your career starting today, I think you're going to be surprised at just how powerful they are. Combined with the written goals that you have that help you keep track of your advancement, I think you're going to find more fulfillment and joy in your work as a barista, and you're definitely going to set yourself up for success in the future. Show notes are available at keystotheshop.com under the resources tab. If you have questions about today's episode, you want to ask about any particular instances that you're going through right now as a barista, uh, and you want some advice, definitely uh, send me an email, chris at keystotheshop.com. If you have suggestions or comments to make about the show, then uh, definitely reach out to me through that email. So remember, you have the tools you need right now to start this journey of becoming better and preparing yourself for opportunities and to set yourself up for success in the industry. And when you take action with that mindset, you're using one of the most effective keys to the shop.